Right, for this video I'll be working through the 2019 Level 2 Mechanics Exam, question 3. Right, later in the hockey match, Nicole takes a penalty corner, she hits a stationary ball towards her teammates. State Newton's third law, which refers to the forces during the collision between the ball and Nicole's stick. So I'll just pause right the answer and discuss. Right, so I've said the force of the ball on the stick is equal size but opposite direction to the force of the stick on the ball. Um, this is not the first time I've ever seen a State Newton's Laws question. Um, pretty impressed with it actually, pretty good. Um, so Newton's Law is just like the whole you know, equal and opposite forces thing. Um, but you're gonna try and, be, try, you know, try and be succinct about it by talking about the size and the direction because it's a vector, it has size and direction. Right, so when hitting, the, when hitting the stationary ball for a penalty corner, Nicole hits with a stick velocity of 18 meters per second. After hitting the ball, the stick continues forward at 12 meters per second. The mass of the stick is 600 grams and the mass of the ball is 160 grams. Calculate the velocity of the ball. Right, so this is gonna be a momentum question. So the first thing we're gonna do is write the initial momentum is going to be equal to the final momentum. Um, and wow, well, look at this, what assumptions are you going to, you're going to make in your calculation? Assuming there's no external forces, so assuming there's no friction. Um, that's, the, that's the assumption that I'm going to make. Um, there'll probably be others, but I'll figure them out as I go along. Right, so the initial momentum is 18 meters per second. So momentum, let's write the formula here. Uh, momentum P equals MV. Uh, so Pi is equal to the mass of the stick, which is 0 0.6 kilograms times the velocity of the stick, which is 18, 18 meters per second, right? So we'll just, and we can see it gives me an answer of 10.8 meters, uh, kg, so there it was 10.8 kg meters per second, because it's mass times velocity. So that's the initial momentum, and uh, we can see here it equals the final momentum. So we have, Pf is equal to 10.8, which is equal to, ooh, how am I going to do this? I'll just do this with the, the final momentum is going to be the momentum of the stick. So that's going to be 12 times 0 0.6 plus the momentum of the ball, which is going to be, I'm not really sure how fast it is. As well, that's what we're trying to find out, the velocity of the ball. So we're going to have mass of the ball, 0 0.16 times V, I'll call B. Right, so now I'm gonna add this together, subtract both sides by this number here, um, and then I'll get left with, I get left with 3.6 kg meters per second. So we have 10.8 minus, uh, we'll just go 12 times 0 0.6, um, and that equals 3.6, kg meters per second, and that equals 0 0.16 times VB. And then you can see I'm just divide both sides, 3.6 divided by 0 0.16. So if I go divided by 0.16, um, 22.5 meters per second. So we can see that 3.6 uh, divided by 0 0.16 equals 22.5 meters per second, negative one. Um, and then I'm just going to go assuming no external forces. Assuming no external forces. All right, look at that. Um, oh, one thing I should have really said, assuming no, no external forces, so conservation of momentum. Conservation of momentum. Momentum, right, that'll do. Right, yeah, so it was, this is a conservation momentum. I should have just stated it without really realizing. I assume this is enough to state it. Conservation momentum. You've assumed PI equals PF. You need to say no external forces, aka friction of the tariff. That would be external force. Right. We can see this. Goalkeepers are heavily protected, including the use of lead, go lead guards as shown. The ball is a mass of 160 grams, shot towards a goal, but hits a goalkeeper's legs. Lead guards instead. The ball has an initial velocity of 30 meters per second. Oh, it's pretty quick. It's almost 100 kilometers an hour. And the time of the impact is 0 0.02 seconds. It rebounds with a velocity of 10 meters per second. So calculate the average force of impact. Um, in your formula sheet, you'll have change in momentum is equal to force times time. 
and that is change the momentum. You can either change the mass or the velocity, but you can't change them both at the same time, otherwise you get wonky things happening. We know the velocity is changing. So it's change in velocity times mass equals force times time. Um, and we're trying to find the average force. Um, so we'll just divide both sides by time. So we get change in velocity times mass divided by time equals force. Now we need to write this slightly more succinctly. So we need to say velocity final minus velocity initial, brackets around that, times the mass equal uh, divided by the time. And now that is equal to, right, this is where things get a little bit uh, tricky. 10 meters per second, it's moving backwards. So technically this is negative 10 meters per second. This is, this is like, I don't know, the misconception kids would have. This is a mistake that lots of kids would make. Um, so we're gonna go, uh, the final velocity is negative 10, because it's moving backwards, minus 30. Let me move my cap out of the way, so we can see that. Um, minus 30 times by 0 0.16, divided by 0 0.16. 0, 0.02 and that gives me negative 320 newtons of force so that equals I'll put negative 320 newtons um, and then I'm going to put down here average force average force equals 320 newtons um, because this, this negative sign just means the force was acting in that direction when the velocity was acting in that direction. And I assume they don't really care um, at all. So, yeah. That's really about it. Right. Last question. The graph below shows the force of impact over time when no leg guards are worn. Ouch. And a second graph to show the, to show the effect that the leg guards would have on the graph shape. Um, so, ooh, there we go. So in our formula on this page here, we have change in momentum equals force times time. If you know anything a little bit about shapes, if this was a square, the area of that square would just be force, you know, base times height, base times height, force times time. Um, so the area inside here, this, technically speaking, is a change in momentum. Either way, the ball needs to stop because it's going to whack your legs, let's just assume it stops. So they're both coming at the same speed, so this area needs to be the same. So when we don't, or when we do wear legs, uh, when we do wear, what are we wearing? Leg guards, that's what they're wearing. It'll increase the time of impact because it takes longer to slow it down, so it decreases the acceleration on the ball, which then decreases the force on you. So the graph would look something like that. Oops, it should be symmetrical as well. Um, there we go. So the force on you will be less, um, but the time of the collision will be more. And this is just like a, I don't know, what do you call this? This is a impulse question? Yeah, that's what it's called. Um, right, justify your answer by using physics principles to explain how the lead guards benefit the goalkeeper. So I'll just do the usual pause and explain. Right, so I've said the graph shows a collision happening for a longer time resulting in less max force. Let's cross that out and put average force. Average force. As the change in momentum is the same with or without the lead guards, it's a pretty like uh, important thing that you need to say. Either way, the ball needs to stop, so whatever momentum it had needs to go to zero. So the change in momentum for both situations is the same. The time of collision must increase to decrease the average force on the leg. And I just put you know change in momentum equals force times time. The pads work to increase the time of collision. Um, what else could you put? You could probably talk about energy as well. Um, you could probably just yabber on about the energy will be dissipated into the pad, into the pad as opposed to the leg. Um, and maybe I'll put and reduce the chance of an injury. Yeah, because that's probably what benefit the goalkeeper. This reduces reduces the chance of injury because that's we need to answer the question. The chance of injury. There we go.